A relative discovered the murder victims Friday on this farmstead south of Humboldt. The victims were Tina Brandon of Lincoln, Philip Devine of Fairfield, Iowa, and Lisa Lambert of Humboldt. She lived at the farmhouse with her infant son, who was not harmed in the attack. The official briefing did not explain what could have sparked the slayings or what the other two victims were doing at Lisa Lambert's house. But the county attorney did reveal one strange detail. Tina Brandon posed as a man named Brandon. Every woman's dream. If um, Brandon really was a man, oh Jesus! He would have women after him all the time. I mean, he knew how to please you. He knew how to do everything right. Good kisser. I can't say so much for lover because we didn't really make love. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, excellent kisser. Excellent, excellent guy. Excellent. You know, knew exactly how a woman wanted to be treated. You know, know exactly how I wanted to be treated. I can't remember if it was a dozen or two dozen roses sitting there, and I had a card, and I had a little stuffed cat next to it, a bottle of perfume. I'm like, what is all this stuff? He's like, well, will you marry me? So I probably thought about it for a minute. <laughs> I said, yeah. And he just starts jumping up and down, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. The beautiful thing about Tenna was he was in touch with his female side and his male side. He knew what females wanted because he was a female at one time. And he knew what males wanted because now he was a male. It was great. I thought Brandon was attractive when I thought it was Brandon until I found out Brandon's Tina. Tina Renee instead of Tina Ray Brandon. I found all that out. I was like, oh God, what am I doing? People have said, you know, this person is a female, this person, I said, but, you know, we're sleeping together. That doesn't matter. You know, here, I'm so naive to anything. It's like, you know, what, what's a strap on? What's this? What's that? I have no idea what you're talking about, you know? And I'm like, well, strap on, you know, feel, feel behind the legs. See if it's strapped on somehow. I'm like, well, okay, whatever. You know, so I'm like, well, okay, you have to take your pants off this time. They take them off, you know? So I thought, well, I'll feel, feel you know, down his back, down past, you know, his legs. So I thought, well, there's nothing there. And I'm thinking, his hands aren't there to try to keep it in place. His hands are up, you know, by my head, under my head or whatever. So I thought, these people, you know, just feeding me all this crap. I'm like, I'm not going to listen to them, you know. So I have no idea. I have no idea why it works so well. <laughs> Hi, tiger. Teach me, tiger, how to kiss you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Show me, tiger, how to kiss you. Whoa, 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 whoa. He'd come up with stories, you know, more sex change stories, and that it got to the point where. Almost nothing's been done. You know, we go from everything to, to you know, half of it and to now where it's just barely starting. And he says, well, but this is the start of the operation. It's the start of what? He's like, well, they've sewn me up and they've started, uh, started me on uh, steroids and saying how they've implanted something <laughs> that's going to eventually grow. And I'm like, hermaphrodite, what are you talking about? I went home and looked it up in the dictionary. I had no idea. What is a hermaphrodite, you know? And I'm like, so what's this mean, you know? And it says something about an animal in the dictionary. So I was like really freaking out. I'm dating an animal. <laughs> I figured some guy would get and find out that she was female, you know, if he didn't know right away and just rape her, you know? And I, it was, what do I want to say? I kind of felt like it would happen, but I didn't. I was trying to put the fear of God in her, you know, more or less, just to, because people are cruel. Changes I'm going through in my life will change me forever. Soon I'll have anybody I want and give them the love that I have. But there's one that won't leave my mind. Maybe I should walk away and find someone else and start over. 
knowing the mistakes I've made and make them change. I still love her so, but I should let her go. One of these nights I'll close my eyes and let everything go. I'm not as strong as I thought. I can't fight. I don't think I can make it alone. By Brandon. I think he had in his head that he was going to get a sex change or something, and he just wanted everybody to know him as always being a man, this is a man, you know, or whatever, you know. And I think that he wanted everybody to know that, so therefore he had to lie. And then he would get caught in lies, so he'd have to say lie after lie to cover up lies. So he was just living one big lie. And he would just scream at, you, scream at me saying, you know, Gina, this isn't a gay relationship. I don't know what you're thinking. I said, well, what am I supposed to think? I mean, I know what you want to be as male, except that unfortunately we have to deal with what we have now. And I said, you are female. And I said, we have to deal with that. Because every time he tried to be truthful to the kids he was with, he was put down. He was called a fag, or worse yet, oh, you're a dyke. Oh, you're really a lesbo. That's what you are, you're a lesbo. We don't want to be around you. looked at it like it was stealing he was doing it to help somebody but it always got him in trouble the funniest thing was he had bought me an engagement ring set on that card it was the actual gold band with the the other ring being the diamond solitaire <laughs> you know at this time I've already figured out this is my card he's like well I bought this for you I said with what well, with my money and I said, you did no such thing. I said, you're giving me a ring that I just bought myself. You know, am I right? <laughs> and so we'd argued and fought over that. And I said, take the ring. I just throw it at him. I don't want it. I do not want it. I said, tell you what, right now, you know, engagement's off. It is off. And then single girls, straight girls would be, oh, I was making out with a girl. Oh. And then the phone calls and the harassment would start. And that's what Tina finally left, because too many people found out that uh Fall City is a white community. Uh, we may have had one or two families in here that were black, but as far as a, the, having gay people come in, you know, Fall City would, I'm sure, you know, escort them out of town. You know, if you got somebody that got a job and, and keeps a job, <laughs> you know, especially a girl that don't get, end up pregnant and end up on welfare for the rest of her life, you're, you're, you're pretty damn lucky, <laughs> you know, so. That's, it. That's false city for you. Brandon was a very polite person. Uh, Brandon didn't talk bad about anybody, and he was very considerate to my daughter, Lana, and he was very clean. You know, I, I, just, I liked him. He was very appealing for a young man. 
They're both smiling. Brandon's looking. That's his typical face right there. His face that I've seen all the time. He's shaved. Um, he would like sit like a man. And he would, you know, talk about women, like pretty women on TV. Um, his favorite woman he thought was really beautiful was Cher. He thought she was gorgeous. I mean, that was the woman to him. I don't know, he'd sit around and talk about cars, just like men do. It gets really boring. Men talk about cars. Oh, we went out drinking together. We talked about women. We'd ride around and say, ooh, what about that one? Ooh, what about that one there, you know? You know, just guy talk. The wool was pulled over a number of people's eyes, you know, and, and she was done it well. And, and one thing I noticed, all the girls saying that she knew how to treat a girl. He knew how to treat a girl. I did. It was really nice being treated like a lady instead of just like a like nothing, like dirt. And it was different. It was nice though it was. God, I had a pee. I'm like, you want me to pull over? No, you just stood up, peed out the window. Why we were moving? It's like you're not peeing on the side of my truck, are you? <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I haven't seen a girl yet that could pee out my window. Lana introduced me to, you know, and they were seeing each other, you know, supposedly dating each other, and said this is Tenere Brandon, you know, whatever, you know. As far as I knew, he was a guy, you know, I. At that time, you know, I mean, now, I mean, if I'll look, you know, I'll say, well, is there an Adam's apple there? Or I'll check for things, but, you know, I mean. I was like, well, if he's not Brandon, then who is he? And he's, she said, Brandon is not a he. Brandon is a she, and Brandon's real name is Tina Brandon. And I just kind of looked at him, I went, what? It's like, yes, it is a woman, not a man. I'm like, there's no way. I said, that is not a woman. I said, it doesn't even look like a woman. I don't think in the beginning they realized it, but after I made the arrest and charged her as a female, uh, the girls down in Fall City, I informed them that she was in jail, and they said, what do you mean, she? And I said, well, Brandon is a f female. And they said, no, she's not. And I said, yes, she is. And uh, that's when it first got out down at Fall City that she was really a female. And, and I don't know if they really believed it or not. And uh, it just got worse. December 21st, 1993. Dear Mom, I do not know if you know where I'm at now or what I'm doing. Well, you can quit guessing and let me tell you. As of right now, I'm in the Falls City County Jail. I've been here for six days. I turned myself in. I'm tired of running from my problems and people. I've been so lost lately, I can't even cry. I was sick last night. I was throwing up. I've lost five pounds in here, but I did pull-ups and push-ups and tighten up my muscles. Well, gotta go. Love you always and forever. Brandon. Lana's father gave her uh, a check with his just his signature on it. She was to go to a beauty shop and get herself a perm. She went ahead and took the check to Hinky Dinkies and wrote it out for $250, which was enough bond to get Brandon out of jail. He wrote this, I think it was the night Brandon got out of jail. I wish you could understand. I'm not yet comfortable with myself. I will never try to hurt you. I want to leave because I am not wanted here. And it's the same shit. And I want to leave so you have no more hell either. I'm so sorry, I just want it to be a moment where I am not pressured and forced. That scares me and makes me more uncomfortable. Sorry, love Brandon. Leave him there, you know, just let him serve his time. Then he can get the hell out of here. I said, what does he think he's doing bringing this shit to a small town like this? You know, he just needs to get the fuck out of here. I told her, I said, something's going to happen if you don't get out of here. 
I was mad at him, but I was worried about what would happen to him if he stayed there. Just a big concern was Brandon's gender between Lana, Lana's mom, and Lana's dad. My mom was disgusted. She, she couldn't believe it. She kept on wanting me to get away from him and all this because she said them kind of people have AIDS. And I told her, no, he does not have AIDS. When I was talking to Brandon, I said, just prove to me right now if you are a man or a woman. But yet, Brandon still didn't want to reveal the truth. That's about the only thing we talked and yelled about. I even shoved ba Brandon back into the dresser, just pushed him backwards into the dresser, and then the dresser hit the window and cracked the window. But I was only there acting as a concerned mother. I wasn't there to cut him down or do any of that. I just really wanted the truth. I think it was just such a big shock, you know, finding out that somebody that had told us that he was a man and made everybody believe, slept with my best friend, you know, find out that this is a woman. You know, nothing that he'd ever told us was true, obviously. It just totally blew everybody's mind. Tom grabbed Brandon, had Tom had his arms under Brandon like this, just holding him like this with his arms like this, and then John under his pants and pulled him down to his ankles. Tom held your arms. Which way was he standing? Beside you, behind you, or what? How did he hold you? And then he took and Tom uh, or John under your pants, right? And he pulled your pants down how far? Past your knees. How far did you pull your underpants down? Okay. What did you have in your underpants? Nothing in your underpants? I was talking about earlier, I had socks, but not any pulling pants I didn't. You didn't have a sock, did you? Uh, run around once in a while with a sock in your pants to make you look like a boy? Yeah. All right, so after he pulled your pants down, he seen you as a girl, what did he do? Did he ponder you any? Yeah. He didn't ponder you any, huh? Doesn't that kind of amaze you? After he pulled your pants down, he been wanting to take you to bed, and you told him no, that you was a boy, and he couldn't do that. Doesn't that kind of get your attention somehow that he would have put his hands in your pants and played with you a little bit? Huh? I don't want to. I can't believe that if he pulled your pants down and you're a female, that he didn't stick his hands in you or your finger in you. I, I can't believe he didn't. Tom was pulling down her pants, and he put his finger up there and said, oh, this, you know, there's something, you know, there ain't nothing there. There's, she's a girl, you know, and I said, well, I saw something. You know, I looked at Brandon, I said, what was it I saw? You know, just playing it off, you know. And I asked Brandon, I said, Brandon, they say my mom just went over the house and they, she wants me to come home, but I can come back. She just wants to talk to me. I said, is it okay? I said, if you don't want me to go, I won't go. I will stay here with you. And he said, that's okay, just go, but don't leave me. Come back. I said, I will be back. I said, is it okay if Tom stays in here with you? And he said, yeah, that's fine, because Tom hasn't really done anything to him except for, you know, the, the pantsing. But I don't think he was scared of Tom. I think it was more John. And so I left, and Tom stayed there with him. Tom looked at me and he goes, John, I need to talk to you. I said, okay, we walked to the I mean, you guys can sit there and shake your fucking heads, no, but I told you, I told both of you, well, not both of you, because I don't think I talked to you on the phone, but Susan, I told you on the phone there's going to be some things I cannot answer because they could endanger or whatever my appeal process. He wasn't even on top of her yet, you know, he was 
uh, doing something with getting something out of a coat and stuff, which I found out later was a rubber, you know, and, uh, you know, and then, you know, a little bit later he was out of the car and he came to me, you know, and said, well, you know, you want to go back there and stuff like that, you know, and I went back, you know, it was stupid and I went back, you know, but I didn't have sex with her, you know, I went back there and I tried, but I couldn't keep it up, too drunk, thinking of my fiance at the time too much and couldn't get it up. So when they got ready to poke you, how was your position in the back seat? On my back. You was on your back. What did he try to start in first half? My vagina. They tried to your vagina, and you say you never had sex before, is that correct? Right. And which one tried to do this first? Tom. And Tom couldn't get it in you? Huh? He said he couldn't get you. I couldn't get it in. Well, I know it hurt. I don't know how it hurt. Where is it hurt? I did ejaculate in 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 the rubber because of the going up and down and the rubbing. You know, when I did get it up, trying to proceed to put it. Uh, you know, have sex with her. But uh, every time it go down, and because of that, you know, I, you know, ejaculated, and I said, "Fuck it," and it got up, <laughs> you know. The first one was Tom. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Then Tom got out, and what did he do? Yeah, he passed through his Then what happened? Yeah, he got his head knocked down. He got his side. Then back to. And then when John got the back seat, what did he do? Alright. After he got his pants down, he got a spread of you, or had you spread out, and he got a spread of you then. Then what happened? Well, how did, let's back up here for a second. First of all, you didn't say anybody was getting it up. Did he have a hard on when he got back there, or what? I don't know. I didn't look. He didn't look. Did he take a little time working it up, or what? Did you work it up for him? No, I didn't. You didn't work it up for him? No. Then do you think he had it worked up on his own or what? I guess so. I don't know. And you've never had any sex before? No. How old are you? 21. And if you're 21, you think you'd have, you'd have trouble getting it in? You know, she was very, very quiet. She didn't say nothing. She, you know, she said ouch a few times, you know. You know, that's it, you know. Wide open door is Brandon. I mean, he was out of breath, he was cold, he had a big old fat lip, I mean, he was bloody and yucky, and he had no shoes on, no shoes at all. He had one shirt on, and he usually wears two. He wears a t-shirt and a shirt over it, and the only shirt he had on was the shirt he wore over the t-shirt. And his pants were all dirty, and he was just, he couldn't hardly breathe. And I asked him what happened, and that's when he said, you know, they beat the shit out of me. I said, who? And he said, Tom. And then later on, after I think it got easier for him, he said, Tom beat the shit out of him, and John raped him. And he said, well, they both raped me, but Tom is the only one that beat the shit out of me. Brandon did not want to uh, turn it into the cops or anything. And I told Brandon, I says, I, 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 I don't care, you know, what you do with your life or what you want to be is your business. I don't care. I says, but nobody, Brandon, nobody deserves to be raped. Well, I didn't, not raped, but kidnapped and taken out there and beaten. Because I didn't know at that time that Brandon was actually raped. No, what I'm saying is that I think you misunderstood my question. Did they do it one time to you, and then the other guy do one time and quit? Or did one guy do it, and then the other guy do it, and then the other guy come back and do it again, and the other guy come back and do it again? They each did it once. They each did it once. You want to file charges against these guys? You want to sign a complaint against him? Yeah. Will you testify in court against him? Yes, sir. I confronted them, and uh, I told them what Brandon's accusations were, and they were trying to tell me it was a bunch of bull. And then when I brought up the deal, I said, well, it's been reported, and if you guys did anything, you better get rid of your evidence. I did say that. And Tom went to the kitchen, got a pan of soapy water and a rag, 
and came back into the room on the north side of the living room and washed up a little spot on the floor and on the wall. But I went there because I didn't believe Brandon. And then when I saw Tom do that, I knew for sure then that, that they were responsible for doing all this. Well, th th they were just alleged charges. So, I wasn't real worried. They, they, they were just alleged charges. No charges were filed or nothing like that. because I knew that if I took the polygraph, that they would know that Tom had went back there and had sex, and then I went back there and tried to have sex, you know? Even though I knew that it was, as far as I knew, consensual, I knew that, that Keith Hayes, just being the person he is, no, 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 he'd be like, that's all I need, and, and I'd go back to prison because they wouldn't give a fuck what I said. I felt Ashamed. I felt ashamed that that someone would make alleged charges against me that I had participated in a rape. Let's talk about the assault of Tina Brandon. Did you physically assault Tina Brandon in your home on December 25th? Yes. Did you punch her? Yes. Did you kick her? Not that I can recall. When you were out in the country with Tina Brandon, before you sexually assaulted her, did you punch and kick her? Yes. Did you beat I her about the face? Excuse me. I did not kick her. I'm sorry. Did you, pe did you beat her about the face? I punched her, yes. Did you then sexually assault her? Yes. Did you, did you then beat her after you had sexually assaulted her? I need her, yes. Why did you hit her? Because I was upset. Oh, I see. You just sexually assaulted her, raped her, and you were upset. So you, then you kneed her in the stomach and threw her to the ground. Yes. You have a person who first says she's a boy, then turns out to be a girl, uh, who has, has uh, you know, done some forgeries or their friends' checkbooks and stuff, and have been in trouble with the law before. And then all of a sudden comes up and says, this guy and this guy raped me. Well, if we did that in society, we'd have half, we'd have a lot of men locked up. Why do you run around with girls instead of uh, guys being your girl yourself? Why do you run around with girls instead of guys being your girl yourself? Why do you make girls think you're a guy? I have the slightest idea. You have the slightest idea. You go around kissing other girls? One, the ones the girls that don't know about you think you're a guy. Do you kiss them? What happened last night? Because I'm trying to get some answers so I know exactly what's going on. Now, you want to answer that question for me or not? I don't see why I have to. Huh? I don't see why I have to. The only thing is, if it goes to court. That answer, that question is going to come up in court, and I'm going to want an answer for it before it goes to court. See what I'm saying? Because I have a sexual identity crisis. You what? I have a sexual identity crisis. You want to explain that? I don't know if I can even talk about that. I don't think anybody really cared about her. They just wanted her out, away. I particularly didn't care what happened to her at that point. I was pretty mad at her myself. I didn't want her to be beat. If I'd been there, I'd have stopped that. But I wanted her to go back to Lincoln. I wanted her away.
And she seemed so different after the rape. I mean, it was almost like she was, they'd already killed everything that was, you know, happy. And she was just really different. There was just something different in her voice and stuff. I mean, that's got to be really traumatic to go through. I can't even imagine. And I knocked again. And when I knocked the second time, I said, I could hear Tanner. I could hear the baby crying then in the background. And I thought, well, that's strange that she's not getting up to take care of the baby. I knocked two or three times. And then I decided I'm just going on in. And as soon as, of course, as soon as I stepped into the living room, then I, well, and at first, I think I denied there was anything wrong. I uh, just seen this Negro sitting on the floor with the coffee table over his la lap. And I thought, this is strange, but yet, you know, and I knew then there was something wrong, but yet I was just telling myself, you know, there wasn't. And I just walked right on through the house. The baby was just screaming. And so I just walked right on in there and walked straight to his crib, didn't look at anything else, and picked him up. And when I turned to leave, then I looked over to the bed. Of course, I could tell when I went in and that there was something wrong in there. Because I just looked across the bed and seen Lisa on the far side next to the window. And I knew I could tell by looking there was nothing I could do to help her anymore that I needed to help Tanner and to get help there, to get law people there. Sheriff deputies were called to the house around 9 o'clock Friday morning where they found the bodies of 21-year-old Tina Brandon of Lincoln, 22-year-old Philip Devine of Iowa, and 23-year-old Lisa Lambert of Humboldt. This Last afternoon, night. authorities revealed that John Lauder and Marvin Neeson of Fall City are being held in connection with the three deaths. A Fall City no, woman who was... dated Tina Brandon under the assumption that she was a he told 1011 News why she believes the two suspects assaulted Tina. They said that they depanced him because of me, that they did it to show me that it was a female. Lana says she knows both of the men charged in the assault. Her sister Leslie lost her boyfriend, Philip Devine, in the tragic shooting. Devine, pictured here in the middle, was in town for the week visiting Leslie's family and had gone over to the farmhouse following an argument between the two, placing him in the wrong place at the wrong time. I walked in and seen one male individual. Uh, partially on a chick couch, partially on the floor. Walked to a bedroom, seen two female individuals uh, in a bed. All three were deceased. In my opinion, all three were executed. And uh, it's one of those things where the only thing I think that kept the child from being killed was its age. Because it could say, you did it, you did it. And I think that's the only thing that uh, kept the child alive. And the fact that they run out of ammo. I pulled up into the driveway there, and they said, just go on. I says, I'm not leaving. I says, what the hell is going on? He says, there had been a trouble homicide down there, and I didn't know how to tell you. I said, you got to tell me straight out. I says, where's Tanner? He's all right. But he says, your daughter's gone. He said, now will you please leave? I said, okay. So then I, I just backed up and I took off back home in. I do know that when I touched her head, because I couldn't, you know, I just wanted to hold her so much, that I couldn't touch her head anywhere that there wasn't bumps on it. So I, I, her, I mean, there wasn't a space on her head that didn't have a bump on top of her head or anything. But I did look and I could see that, and she still had bruises that you could see. 
by nightfall, we already knew that uh, John had stolen a gun, and we'd also recovered that gun, but we'd already made the arrest by that time, but we'd arrested him for the sexual assaults at that time. And, uh, of course, then he went ahead, and Neeson went ahead and said, yes, we was out there and killed those three people. Well, that kind of gives you an indication that, uh, but uh, as far as a warrant, no, you don't need one. They did good. But the county attorney says that officials continue to move forward with their investigation into the alleged rape and kidnapping of Tina Brandon, despite inconsistencies in her story. The people responsible for these homicides is not the sheriff's department or the police department. It's the defendants that are in court today. If convicted on the three counts of first degree murder, both John Lauder and Tom Neeson could face the death penalty. I was just a baby, my mama told me so. Always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that lonesome whistle, I hang my head and I cry. Prosecutors wasted little time at the Richardson County Courthouse in Falls City. And they were brief and to the point. They told the jury that Nissen and John Lauder planned and carried out the murders so that Tina Brandon could not testify that they had raped her. Now, the defense attorney for Nissen contends that it could have been Lauder and not Nissen that was the trigger man, and he told the jury that Nissen should be considered innocent until otherwise proven. Well, I believe had I not met Brandon or Lauder, I wouldn't have been in no mess at all. Say that you met Brandon and not Lauder. At that point, I asked John Lauder for the knife. Why did you want the knife? To stab Tina Brandon. Why were you looking to stab her at that time? To make sure she was dead. Did you have some impression that she wasn't yet dead? Yes, she was twitching. Can you tell me what you did to ensure that she was dead? I took the knife out of John Lauder's hand and grabbed Tina Brandon and pulled her towards me at the same time of pushing the knife towards her, and I stabbed her. Look at what they did to these people. The gun to Tina Brandon's chin was so close that the power burned. And of course, she stabbed. These are executions. These are assassinations. And they tell you a lot about the intent of the people when they walk in that door. These aren't wild shots that happen to hit someone or, or spraying bullets around a place. These are calculated executions. Lisa Lambert fared no better. The last <coughs> sight in Lisa Lambert's life was seen in, in Exhibit 105, close enough to her eye that the powder also burned her eye. That was the last thing Lisa Lambert saw. Executions. That, that's the only way to describe these killings. And then Philip Devine. If you can imagine the terror of sitting in that other room, listening to two people die, and know he had to know he was next. And this defendant curds Philip Devine into the living room, and then he too gets a bullet to the head, and as well as one to the face of the neck. I bet those rich folks eating in those fancy dining cars. They probably drank his coffee and smoked a big cigar. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those wheels keep a rolling, and that's what tortures me. Verbal. I've always, I'm a verbal, more of a verbal person, you know. I'll tell somebody, hey, fuck me, you know, blah, 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 and, you know, even say, you know what, sometimes I'll kill you. I mean, I don't know, I, in my lifetime, I probably said I kill you probably a million times. But did I carry it out? No, you know. And that's the whole fact, you know. There's, there's no one that it's, you know, what you're saying is one thing, but doing the other thing. And I know the difference between both, you know. <laughs> And I'm not, just because I say something, I ain't going to carry it out.
If I did, there'd be a lot of people. <laughs> there'd be a lot of people dead. That's, uh, you know. I mean, I hate the idea of, of copping deals. I hate it. I hate it with passion, okay? But I also know that in order to get the bigger fish, you sometimes have to do it as distasteful as it may be. And the only way we were going to get Neeson to squeal like the pig he is, is to offer him a deal and spare his tail from the chair. And Neeson was a coward. We knew that, and that's how we played him. We played him for the gutless coward that he is, and he sang like a canary. What took place at that point? I moved away from the bed a little bit, and John Lauder raised his arm and shot Lisa Lambert. Did you see on which part of her anatomy she was shot? Yes. Where? In the stomach area. And what was her reaction as she was shot? She jumped and screamed. Well, where, where was the baby? Sitting right next to her. Can you describe what happened next, please? I saw John Lauder raise his hand with the pistol in his hand, and the pistol fired, and Lisa Lambert was hit. Did you see where? Yes. Where was that? In her eye. What was done with Philip at that point? I told Philip to sit down. And what happened at that time? John Lauder raised the pistol. Did the pistol fire? Yes. It looked like it hit Phil. Why do you say it looked like it hit him? What did you notice? He slumped back into the, the couch. Was there a second shot fired at that time? Yes. By who? By John Lauder. And where did it strike, if you know? I appeared to hit Phil. John Lauder can only be described in one word. That word is evil. Evil to put a bullet in a, someone's head because she had the audacity to make a rape complaint. How dare she make a rape complaint? She so puts a bullet in her head. And it's evil that shot Lisa Lambert. And then evil that shot Phil Devine as he begged for his life. That's what we're dealing with here. You bet we're dealing with evil. This is evil. And this is guilty. Seven charges. Thank you. Defendant Jan L. Lauder is hereby sentenced to the penalty of death for the murder and the first degree murder of Tina Brandt. Defendant Jan L. Lauder is hereby sentenced to the penalty of death for the murder and the first degree of Lisa Lambert. That the defendant Jan L. Lauder is hereby sentenced to the penalty of death for the murder of, in the first degree of Philip Devine. Your reaction to what happened? Well, I'm, I think he got what he deserved. I mean, at least he had a fair trial and a decision, and he never gave them a fair trial. He was judge and jury and killed him. So I think he got what he deserved. I think he's evil. I think the justice system has taken way too long for what it's supposed to be. Because the criminal is protected more than what me or you are. If you ain't a hardened criminal, you're, you're nobody. That's the way it seems. I know it ain't right to think that way, but that's the way I feel. Is this one step closer to uh, helping uh, you and your family put it yes. behind? Yes, but it'll never be the same. You know, you think, you, you think back to the little house south of Humboldt, and the three people that died in there some night. Think of the fear and, the, and it was going on that night to those three people. Well, you're watching your friend getting killed, you know, and know you're next. What's that like? And you got a baby right there, and you're afraid the baby's going to die. What kind of fear is that, you know? But yet, 
way down the road somewhere, there's always a chance they could get off on some judge's decision that we did something wrong. But uh, in my opinion, we did nothing wrong.